In this video I will examine the accuracy of this simple home built linear drive. The carriage is guided by 12 ball bearings of the dimensions 10 x 26 x 8mm. The rotational movement of the electric motor is transformed into linear movement through a 6mm threaded rod. With the screw being heated up by a gas torch, a 6mm thread is formed at two stripes of plastics with the dimensions 20 x 60 x 4mm. One stripe is screwed on the carriage... ...while the second stripe is used to clamp the threaded rod. Tighten the construction in such a way that there is no noticeable axial tolerance while you are still able to turn the threaded rod by hand. Normal ball bearings have axial backlash. That's why I'm using two ball bearings press fitted to a square tube to link the threaded rod with the mechanics. The more pre-stress is applied to the ball bearings with the nuts, the lower the backlash. On the other hand, with increasing pre-stress, friction is increasing too. Normal ball bearings are not made to hand axial forces. Angular contact ball bearings would be the better choice, but the mantra of this construction is to use commonly available parts. The larger the ball bearings, the better they will cope with the axial forces over time, which is why I'm using devices with 10mm inner and 29mm outer diameter. You can bend the 6mm threaded rod easily by hand, which is useful for this type of linear drive. Caused by the simple construction, the threaded rod will never flush exactly with the linear guides while turning. When using a 10mm thread, the force needed to bend the rod is significantly higher. Additionally, the torque needed to overcome the friction between the metal surface and the plastics thread is also increasing with a larger diameter, thus the minimum torque needed to turn the rod becomes clearly higher. On the other hand, a 3mm rod is too weak to absorb axial forces. The 6mm thread is a good compromise. Lubricate the thread to reduce friction and so wear off the plastics. Here I am applying used motor oil which is a very cheap lubricant. The second end of the threaded rod is the free end. With no guidance, this end starts vibrating whenever the rod turns with high speeds. A simple ball bearing prevents that end from vibrating while axial movement is not limited. The torque of common DC motors is too weak to turn the threaded rod directly, thus a gear is needed. Once again, variability and simplicity are the main specifications of the construction. The gear is made of a plywood disc with the dimensions 170 x 5mm at the threaded rod... ...and a piece of a rubber tube with 6mm outer diameter used as pulley on the shaft of the motor. The total transmission is around 28 to 1. The torque is forwarded by friction, thus the motor shaft must be pressed on the plywood disc, which is done by a simple rubber band. At 12V we get a speed of 120 rounds per minute on the threaded rod, while the motor windings consume 300mA, resulting in an input power of 3.6W. The optimum gear ratio as well as the maximum speed of the drive depends on the characteristics of the DC motor. This motor consumes 1.8A at 12V, thus the input power is 22W. The pulley on the motor shaft is a rubber roll from an old printer with an outer diameter of 15mm. 
The resulting gear ratio is approximately 11 to 1 and the rotational speed of the threaded rod is 600 rounds per minute. The linear movement is measured with a dial indicator. One scale mark equals a movement of 0.01mm, thus 10 micrometers. With the threaded rod, the carriage can be directed to the zero mark easily by manually turning the plywood disc clockwise. Now the disc is turned counterclockwise until the indicator starts moving again, which happens almost without lost motion. So did we build an ideal linear drive? Not really. Let's turn the disc in such a way that the linear drive moves to the left until zero is reached and mark that position on the plywood disc using a copper wire. Now the disc is activated for three more turns causing the carriage moving on to the left and finally change the direction of movement and bring the disc back to the marking after three turns. The measured discrepancy in movement is around 10 micrometers. That's valid as long as there is no side load applied to the carriage. With this home built spring scale we can measure force. If a force of approximately 35 newtons acts on the spring inside the gauge, it is stretched to the marking. Using this spring scale we can apply that force to the carriage of the linear drive. The carriage is pulled to the right and released... ...and pulled to the left and released by what we can read a deflection of 40 micrometers under maximum load and less than 10 micrometers after releasing the carriage. Let's have a closer look at the stiffness of the mechanics. By pushing on the base plate I can deflect the carriage for 20 micrometers. Bending the threaded rod causes a deflection of 50 micrometers, but consider that in praxis the rod should never bend that much while turning. When pulling the fastening point of the ball bearings, we get a deflection of around 5 micrometers. The sensor disc mounted on the threaded rod has 32 teeth, thus we get 128 pulses from the light sensors each revolution. In theory, the Arduino moves the carriage for 7.8 micrometers with each step. As you can see, that movement is not divided into equal steps. There is a variation ranging from less than 5 micrometers up to more than 10 micrometers. You can also notice overshooting. The indicator sometimes oscillates considerably before settling on a point. If the carriage is moved to zero, coming from left... ...moved another 32mm to the right... ...and finally moved to the left the same number of pulses, we get an error of less than 5 micrometers. We can simulate side load during movement with a second carriage sliding along aluminum bars on rubber gaskets. 35 newtons are needed to overcome kinetic friction and so to move the carriage. If the carriage is moved again under side load with changing direction, we get an error of 35 micrometers, which equals approximately 5 pulses on the sensor disc. Let's start a long term test of the linear drive. First, the deviation under side load is measured using the spring scale. 
The resulting deflection is significantly smaller than before, because I have adjusted the mechanics more tightly to demonstrate the effects caused by wear more clearly. During a time period of 80 minutes, the carriage is moved 100 times for 22cm to the right and the same number of pulses back to the left. After the procedure, the deviation is measured again. Now we get approximately 30 micrometers when the carriage is released. The wear on the plastics thread is the main reason for the significant decrease in accuracy. So let's modify the mount of the plastic stripes slightly. Now, Four rubber gaskets are used to press the second half of the plastics thread on the rod. In doing so, the wear of the plastics thread is compensated by the elastic rubber stack. Instead of the rubber gaskets, you can also use a rubber roll or a steel spring from an old printer. Once more, the carriage is driven 100 times for 22cm to the right and back to the left. Afterwards, the maximum deflection caused by the spring scale is 20 micrometers. After another 300 runs, we get a total movement of almost 1.8 km in 320 minutes with a 35 N side load. The maximum deflection caused by the spring scale is still no more than 20 micrometers and much smaller after the carriage is released. The wear on the plastics thread is almost perfectly compensated by the modified mount. Under side load we get an error of 30 micrometers when changing the direction of movement. Without the load carriage we get just 5 micrometers. In theory, a full turn of the threaded rod equals a linear movement of 1mm. When dividing the movement into 4 steps, we get 245... 490... 745... and 990 micrometers. The measured errors are not larger than the observational error of the arrangement. Thus, there is no evidence for irregular movement. Let's repeat the measurements near the free end of the threaded rod. With the spring scale, the maximum deflection is 35 micrometers. When released, that error is less than 5 micrometers. The 4 step full turn gives readings of 245 micrometers... 495 micrometers... 750 micrometers... and 990 micrometers. There is also no clear evidence of irregular movement. The error when changing direction is 15 micrometers with no load carriage mounted... ...and 45 micrometers with the simulated side load. Obviously, the 6mm threaded rod bends more at a length of 25cm than near to the fixed end, but the additional error is no more than 15 micrometers. The gear has also passed the long run, the surface of the rubber roll is just slightly worn.
As conclusion, that simple linear drive can be positioned with a relative error of no more than 50 micrometers. Not so bad, I suppose. With a more robust mechanics, the result should become better. In another video I will demonstrate the weak points of a CNC chassis. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.